So, hello everyone, uh, Maxime here. Uh, I'd like to welcome uh, Annick uh, Renové from uh, Clinical Genomics, Caroline's Guarantee of Set. Uh, she's going to talk about the RNA fusion pipeline, which is a pipeline I personally I like a lot because I used to work on this one. I'm still like helping out a bit, but uh, yes, definitely she's doing like way better job than I was doing at the time. Uh, so yes, thank you, Annick, for that already. But yes, before we start, I'd just like to quickly thank the Chen Zuckerberg Initiative for helping uh, for helping us out and uh, organizing these uh, bite-sized talks. And uh, to all of our listeners, so you'll be able to unmute yourself at the end of the talk for questions. So, Annick, you're on. Hi, everyone. So, um, yeah, I'm Annick. I'm the main developer currently of RNA Fusion, and I will lead you through a um, hopefully short um, uh, technical introduction, a little bit what is our goal with the pipeline, um, what we can get out, and, and how to use it in a few um, a few um, words. So um, I will uh, start with a little bit hmm, interesting. Yeah, uh, our angle with the pipeline. So we are coming from um, from uh, the Clinical Genomics Unit in Stockholm is uh, having a lot of, of links with clinical diagnostic. And um, um, we are providing analysis tools that help diagnosticians um, when they are um, reporting back to patients. So we are really part of routine uh, clinical care. And uh, clinical genomics is sitting in Scilab Lab, which is a conglomerate of um, four different universities um, uh, that, um, that work together. So we are part of an organization that is part of an organization, et cetera. So hence the multiple affiliations. Um, so um, we need fusions um, in uh, because they have been detected increasingly in, in many um, common cancer types, and um, they are a very valuable tool for diagnostic purposes. The first versions were developed um, during Martin Proc's uh, master thesis at Salife Lab. Um, and um, it, he has been building on the work of others, and exactly Maxim has been, uh, has been uh, contributing to it a lot. Um, but we have a lot of, of uh, different contributors um, along the years. Um, unfortunately, it got outdated, uh, as many scientific software do, because um, we got a lot of other things on our desk, I'm guessing. And, um, and the uh, software got updated, the database got, uh, bases got much better. Um, and and uh, all of a sudden, when uh, when we wanted to use it end of last year, um, the pipeline was effectively broken. We couldn't download the references that we needed to run, so um, there was need for some rework. Um, so that's when I came into play, and um, so there is the now version um, uh, two two point zero zero that has been um, has come out already. And it, um, it uh, was a complete rewrite and uh, an upgrade to DSL2 syntax. Uh, it includes flexibility um, so that you can, um, you can make the pipeline do more or less what you want. Um, otherwise, just open an issue and we'll see what we can do um, with CLI options and uh, adding visualization and uh, quality control tools. So the main goals is to detect fusion in RNA sequencing, but uh, there are many different ways, uh, different tools to, to detect fusions. So the idea is to combine the, the power of the tools available and um, to compare them, to compare them between themselves and also with databases of fusions that are already present, which can help you in, in case you're looking for a common fusion type, but can also, um, if you're looking for a novel fusion, you might want to go further than just the databases. So this is just an indication. Um, it is also um, completed with visualization tools and quality con control. So the, the, the pipeline overview looks a little bit like this. So you can imagine it like a network of different subway lines. Um, you can take any of the subway lines, all of them, or just maybe Ariba, Squid, and Pisley, and you maybe don't care about Fusion Catcher and Star Fusion, something like that. You also have a parallel line um, that um, is uh, consisting of the, the quality control, 
and the um, the core analysis tool which would lie here, whereas a fusion report, which is a tool developed by Martin Prox, um, that basically takes all of the the fusion detected by the five different um, subway lines, put them together, and check okay is this fusion um, identified by this tool and is present in this database. And then once once we have looked at this, we take every fusion that has been identified by two tools or more, and we look again in more in detail into it with Fusion Inspector, collect that statistics, etc. So um, here is um, the how the output of Fusion Report looks like. Um, you can see that it has an interesting dashboard um, where you have all the tools known and versus unknown and uh, um, fusion databases and by how many tools um with uh, fusion detected so here you can already see a little bit that pisley in our case was very sensitive so it it um it detected many fusion now i'm gonna try to do um a um, interactive demo. Let's see how it works, um, because this is the also the the table here is very very nice um, to look at it a, li at a little bit more in detail. Do you see the the um, browser? Uh, yes, no problem. All right, good. So you can see that um, here. I can highlight how many um, fusions were identified with Pisley, and if I hide the fusions. Um, identified by Pisley, I can have a look which tool identified how many fusions, which is quite quite interesting. And if um, if I remove um, fusions that were detected by by one tool, probably Pisley, then um, I have a, a bit more of a detailed um, panel here. Um, the, this this table though is um, is uh, very interesting because you can you can um, you can sort um, um, how how you want it, um, like change the orders, etc. Um, but basically, um, so this is a sample that is artificial. You will probably never see this, hopefully, in a um, in a natural sample. Um, but uh, this is a, a sample consisting of of twenty uh, fusions. So you have. Um, you, you have those in the sample. Um, and as you can see, we uh, they are found out by all the tools um, corresponding to the uh, five tool heads. And then you have a scoring function that depends on the number of tools um, that have found the, the fusion and also um, on the um, different databases that have found it. Um, so that's... Um, that's a, a, a quite um, valuable tool if you want to compare between different tools. Now, um, coming back to um, to um, the different results, we we can have a look at Fusion Inspector. So um, here is just one side, the HTML um, output of Fusion Inspector, but there is a lot more, and I really encourage you to run it and look for yourself um, if if there is something that can be of interest to you. If if you're interested in a special um, part of of the fusion, there are BAM files. There are um, a lot of tables of statistics. So this is just an overview. But again, um, you can. Um, you can, it's an interactive table, so you can again um, look at, uh, at fusions and you have also some visualization possible in the browser, among others. So you can, um, you can see some, some statistics here and, um, and um, a bit more about the, the gene and, and their position. Um, the, the last visualization tool that I wanted to, to show you um, now is Ariba visualization tool. So it's only done for vis uh, fusions that have been identified with Ariba. And um, so you basically get a PDF file out, which one slide per fusion, and this is one fusion. And you can see that you have a very detailed view of um, where the, um, the breakpoint happen. 
So you, oops, no, sorry. Yeah. So you can, um, you can uh, you, um, really have a, an idea of the sequence, etc. You can also have a quick look at the retained protein domains, which might have already um, an importance um, pathologically, and a few um, supporting read counts, like um, statistics. Now, um, a little bit about how to use the pipeline. And um, what you would have to do is first build the references. And um, this requires patience, because at the, um, at the time, we are building star fusion reference from scratch, and that takes about 24 hours on HPC. So um, yeah, just don't be surprised that it takes a long time. Um, yeah, it is um, what it is for the moment. Um, I'm hoping that um, uh, to make it shorter at some point, if I can host the references um, directly, the built references, but uh, this is something I'm working on. Um, so you would have to start by uh, creating a Cosmic account and passing your, your username and password um, to the, um, to the, uh, to the um, software. And then uh, you would have to specify build reference re references and the tools that you want. So here I put all because I find that it makes sense to um, build for all tools. But if you only want to use Ariba, then you can just do dash dash Ariba. Uh, if you want to use Ariba and Fusion Catcher, you would just do uh, dash dash Ariba dash dash Fusion Catcher, and you would only do download those references. Then you know, need to provide genome space, which is the path to your references, um, and out there, which will be um, the um, output directory of, of the run. So in this case, it will not contain very much because um, all of the data, so to speak, the references will be generated in genome space, um, but um, you will have still the execution trace, the logs, um, the, the versions, et cetera, um, in the out there. Um, so now to run the pipeline. So you just do not specify build references, and it will run the actual analysis. Again, you have the possibility to do um, all of the analysis, or you can just do any combination of the four tools that you want. So if you want fusion catcher and squid, dash dash fusion catch, catcher, dash dash squid. If you want everything except Pisley, just specify each tool and not Pisley. You also need an input this time, it will not. It in, will not complain if you do not have an input in the first um, in, in when you build the references. But if you try to run the pipeline, um, it will complain if you don't have a sample sheet. So you need to uh, create a sample sheet with your sample. The first three columns are standard and if core. So the sample name, uh, FASQ1, FASQ2, and on top you have the strandedness that is um, depending on your library preparation kit. You need to link the genome space, the path to your references, and the out there is this time very important because it will contain all of your analysis. Um, yes, so I, I included a few things um, to help you um, gain more flexibility in your usage of, of, um, of the pipeline. Um, you might just use it very standard. You don't, you don't have to even look into these options, but if you are looking into doing something more specific or gaining some time at runtime, um, then it might be useful for you. You have um, the possibility to skip the visualization if you're just interested in the different results for the tools, but not the visualization. So you would skip, um, with skip underscore this, you will skip Ariva visualization and fusion inspector. Skip QC, you will skip the entire QC line. Uh, you could um, manually feed references um, paths for uh, each tool if you have them in different um, directories. And you can also just run fusion inspector with um, the option fusion inspector only. And then you will have to provide fusion inspector fusion and the path to um, a file that you manually construct 
and that uh, has a fusion that you want to, to look into for this sample. And then only fusion inspector would be around. So as you can see, you can have a few possibility to, to enter at different points of the pipeline. Um, it has been uh, suggested to me to, to maybe also um, add an alignment um, shortcut. So you would feed manually alignments to the pipeline. This is a great idea. Um, at the moment, as you can see, we are aligning basically for each line. And this is because we have each time um, parameters for the alignments that are um, optimized for the different fusion detection tools. So it should perform slightly better, but if you want to save time, you might want to bypass the steps. So this is something that I think I will work with in the very near future. And about the future, I will talk a little bit about what's going on. Um, so there will be a, a next release, hopefully very soon, with trimming, um, adapter and quality trimming, uh, with um, the possibility to run string tie as an extra line. And um, that will be helpful because um, there is a type of fusion that, that is not detected by any tools that is uh, implemented at the moment. And that is when you skip, um, for example, an exon, it was in the same gene. Um, and that um, should be resolved by using string type. But again, if you're not interested in this type of fusion, you could skip it completely or run just this. Um, and now I, <laughs> no pressure, but um, I'm I'm really looking forward to see if we find a solution for the AWS mega test so that we can host a demo um, on um, results on the website and then you can have a look yourself um, to um, the results that that the pipeline can can give you. Um, on the um, in next rose summit in Barcelona, I will present a bit more details, hopefully on um, our implementation implementation production, what sort of issues we are facing, a little bit about the data. And um, I'm hoping also to release a how-to video with more details and hands-on um, 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 demonstration about each uh, command line option. Um, now, if you have any questions, I'm happy to hear them now, um, or um, feel free to reach us um, out on Slack or on GitHub, open an issue. Um, it's it's been great to hear about um, about the different um, experiences. Yeah, thank you for for your attention. Uh, thanks a lot, Anik. That was like uh, super good and super clear. Uh, I really like it. Uh, so now people should be able to unmute themselves if they have like any question. Uh, I think we have uh, Anne who is like uh, wants to, to say something. No. Just showing our video. Uh, I think I had a question. Uh, I yes, had a question. Ashil, go. Thank, you. Thank you for the nice talk. Um, so the visualization and everything is amazing because it, it really sort of puts these things into perspective. Um, and for a while, this pipeline sort of stood out here because we don't really have that sort of thing for. For most other NF4 pipelines, other than maybe the multi QC report. So it's quite nice sort of having something that's customized that you can use to organize and query the results and stuff. Um, I guess we should probably start thinking about how we do that for other pipelines as well at some point. Um, in terms of references, though, is it just human samples that the pipeline works with, or is there, do others work? Is how easy? Because as I, I tend to keep up to date with what's going on in the Slack channel, but it, things get out of date very quickly on NF4, as you know. So um, yes. what I've always been confused about is and is, a, is about the, the references that are out of the box compatible with the pipeline and how easy it is to create references to use with the pipeline, because that's been quite a big issue recently, right, in terms of creating these references and using them. Yes, so um, I won't say it's easy, but it's possible. Okay. <laughs> so um, you could basically feed any reference that you build yourself to the um, to the pipeline. Um, the recipes are there in the um, in the pipeline, right? Right when when I, I build them. So if you if you feed in non-human mouse or something like that, 
um, uh, FASTQ and GTF, then you would um, you would be able to build the references for non-human. Um, but again, not guaranteeing that it's easy. So what's the problem? What's, where's the complication? Um, you might not find the exact same um, types of files, or you might be missing databases. So of course, the, the whole database is human-based, so you won't be able to compare. But most, mostly, I think it should be possible. It's it's okay. a more in like searching for the right files, um, testing a bit, yeah. Okay, cool. And and I mean, is there any? Do we have these databases on NF Core anywhere that, that are just easily pullable, no. or is that part of what you are going to do um, next? That's something that I would love to have, um, yeah. and that would reduce our also our tests a lot because at the moment, as I said, it's twenty four hours to build the references. So if I could host them somewhere, if you have some space, shout out. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure we could make it available um, somewhere. I mean, we, the, 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 I guess the thing, and slightly going off topic now, but um, the AWS ID nuns bucket we have on S3 has typically been used just for that. And so we haven't really added any other custom files to it, but um, it could be something we could maybe just push there if it's tested and it works and we knows then we can just have an s3 part and upload it so if you get if you get a list of assets together then um mm -hmm. yeah i think maybe I, post in our genomes and we yeah. can try and make it happen definitely yeah cool thanks for the talk and see you in, in at summit <laughs> yes <laughs> okay has anyone has any other question then Then I guess we're good. Uh, thank you very much again, Anik. Uh, let me stop recording.